set this lesson up a little bit before we get started in it. Talk about waiting for Jesus. The prophets of old of the Old Testament got a good glance into the future. <laughs> Through those prophets, God gave us the ability to know what lies ahead. There were messages of encouragement, messages of discouragement, disappointment. All these prophets had one thing in common. They spoke of a coming king. From Genesis to Malachi, yeah. there was that anticipation of Jesus coming. The books were written by different authors at different times over centuries. But all had one thing in common. They were all bound together as God's chosen people. Through, through God's prophets, he was able to define his nation and let his great love be known throughout the world. The prophecy show us that Jesus was fully human like us, but he was still fully God. Yeah. And I like Galatians 4 and 4. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent his son made a woman made under the law. Yeah. Starting at verse 7. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes. The lady meant a manger because there was no room for them in the end. They came as a baby. Mm -hmm. When God chose to send salvation to this world, he chose to send his son as something small as a baby. He was a small baby, but a powerful baby. Yeah. When God established his Jewish nation from which his son would enter the world, he sent a baby boy to a barren couple, Abraham and Sarah. Yeah. Then you had Isaac, who fathered Jacob. Jacob fathered the 12 tribes of Israel. So when God's people were in bondage in Egypt, God needed to deliver. He sent a baby boy to a devout Jewish couple, and Moses grew up to become that deliverer. When Israel turned to idol worship and turned away from him, God sent a baby boy to Hannah and Elkanah named Samuel, who led the nation back to God. Ruth and Boaz had a boy named Obed, Obed's grandson, David, born, eventually a king. Yeah. God used David to reestablish the kingdom that King Saul almost destroyed. And that's what the people wanted was Saul. Yeah. And th then Jesus would be born through that lineage. So the picture, babies may be small, but they're some of God's best answers to our need, biggest need. Talk about the shepherds and the angels. Verse 8. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you that you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. Here's Jesus who left heaven, the best situation you could be in. He's born a baby. And I want you to think about where he was born and what a horrendous place to be born. Jesus Christ, the King, was not born in comfortable settings. No. Not born in comfortable surroundings. He was born in a feeding trough. His birth was only covered in one verse, but you got to think about it. He was born in a nasty, smelly stable. So in the very beginning, Christ was turned away and neglected by men, as Richard talked about last Sunday night. There was no room for Jesus in the end. If someone would have cared, they see Mary and Joseph, Mary's pregnant, about to, about to have the baby, somebody would have done something about it. He was born in poverty. Mary and Joseph had no money to pay for a room. It was a busy time of year. Many people in Bethlehem were coming to pay their taxes, yeah. but no one helped them. No one was looking for him. He was born in loneliness. The 
birth took place with no one else around. No family, no friends, just Mary and Joseph. Mary herself wrapped her own baby <coughs> in swaddling clothes. And all these people are around paying their taxes in Bethlehem. He was born in humiliation. He wasn't born in a hospital. Mm -mm. Wasn't born in a comfortable home. Wasn't born in the home of a family member or a friend under the doctor's care. None of that. He wasn't even born under the stars of heaven, but in a smelly stable. He was born in a corruptible world full of sin on his first coming. And I can tell you on his second coming, it'll be the same. It's full of greed, selfishness, unkindness. The innkeeper was so caught up in the cares of the world that he couldn't make room for him. And I think about how many people missed the first coming, how many people will miss the second. Prophets of old told us about the first one. Mm -hmm. Christ was born here, lived 33, maybe in a half years, made himself well known. There's overwhelming proof yeah. in history that Jesus existed. So who did the angel of the Lord appear to first? The shepherds were watching over their flock. And why do you say shepherds? When you send and receive Christmas cards, you'll notice that many of them depict a sweet, gentle scene with shepherds. Some around a campfire, you get the image of a kind people. The cards really depict a positive image in that time. Not so. And all through Christ, although Christmas cards may give that image, it was hardly that way when Jesus was born. When you think about the shepherds. Here's one of the problems I have a problem with. Throughout the academy, throughout all the training that I've had, they've always said that police officers were like shepherds. The public's the sheep. There's a reason for that, and I won't go into it here, but they always told us you're the shepherd. Until I start studying this and realize what people have to say about shepherds. <laughs> We know all the way back in Genesis that shepherds were despised. Makes me feel good. They were loathsome. Being a shepherd was a despised occupation. I get that. I get the disappointed look when I knock on the door or go up to a window. Yeah. Shepherds were the last people you would expect to be worshiping God. Their jobs as shepherds, they didn't make it to the temple worship. They didn't make it to church services. They didn't get to observe the Sabbath. Shepherds were reviewed or viewed as ignorant, stupid, irreligious, immoral, crude, vulgar, and they stunk. I hope I don't stink. <laughs> Smell like the pig. Yeah. <laughs> All that said, it made them unceremonially clean. Shepherds, I'm, I, I'm not here. Shepherds were known to be lazy, dishonest, often getting accused of letting their flocks graze on other people's pastures. It's not a real life Hallmark picture. So why the shepherds? They were outcasts. They were nobodies. But the glory of the Lord shone about these shepherds that night. And you know what tonight, why I think that happened over the first? That's God's, God's grace to the people that are outcasts like me. The Bible says in Luke 19, 10, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. We would be a people that would fully expect God to send an angel to the governor and the president, have it live streamed on social media, have the best horses trotting through town, the best carriages, limousines. Jesus left the splendor of heaven because of people, because of sin. People like shepherds, people like us, black people, white people, poor people, rich people, big and little. He came for whosoever will. 
And in this text, the angel of the Lord appears to the foulest people in Bethlehem to announce the birth of Christ. He came for outcasts too. And that's why he started out with the shepherds. God made a shepherd. In David, God made a shepherd into a king. In Jesus, he made a king into a sacrificial lamb. Yeah. Verse 13, And suddenly there was with the, the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. The angels made a spectacular appearance before the shepherds. They cried out for the glory of God to be lifted up. The angels cried for peace and good will toward men. The angel of the Lord appeared to Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist. He appeared to Mary, telling her the son of God would be born to her. The angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph, telling him to take Mary as a wife. Thirteen times recorded in the Gospels, Jesus used the phrase, I have come. I've come to call sinners. I've come in my Father's name. I've come to do the will of my Father. And I like this one. I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Mm -hmm. Jesus had his first coming. A lot of people missed it. 